Let's turn our attention to the southeast now. Uh, tensions have, uh, have heightened in southeast Nigeria in the past months as assaults on security formations and killings have become widespread in the region, particularly in Imo State. Joining us now to discuss the security situation in the southeast, as well as efforts to restore peace, is a prominent Nigerian lawyer and former president of Igbo think tank group, Akai Kenga, Godi Uwazurike. It's good to have you with us in the Thank studio. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, let me start this way. Um, some say that to diagnose, to solve a problem, you first have to diagnose it. So perhaps you can help us. Uh, recently, we saw a trending video of cows being set ablaze in Anambra State. So what is, in your opinion, at the heart of the disruption, the insecurity, and the violence that seems to have erupted in the Southeast? Well, what we are seeing in the Southeast is synchronized violence synchronized by certain people, definitely not by Igbos. Okay. Those people who are doing that are foreigners. If you see a group of Igbo people moving, from their physiognomy, you will know. Now, one of the things that people did in the Southeast was to get close to them, speak Igbo to them, and without exception, they responded in broken English. And you saw the other man speaking on Sunday, being displayed by the police as the only surviving person among those who attended to burn the prisons again. The man was given an Igbo name. And when he spoke, he had another accent. But back to your question about what is really happening. In the past two years or more, the clamor for a president of Nigeria coming from the Southeast has been on. And if you notice up to the past three months, there was no problem in the Southeast, four months. What happened? Suddenly, if you read some papers published in Abuja, you see Igbos are killing Northerners. You call those in the South, they say, what are you talking about? It has nothing to do with any Igbo man or any Northerner. What we are witnessing is a programmed action by some people to destabilize the Southeast, indeed the whole of Igbo land with a message, Igbo land is unstable. If you're unstable, how then can you produce a president? That is the real key in issue. The headsmen have always been there. But if you notice, for the past three or four months, each of the headsmen had died out. Except in a Boeing state, where up to last Sunday, the headsmen were still killing people. Mm. But, but we cannot deny the fact that these destruction and arson attacks are taking place in the Southeast region on security formations, on uh, electoral body, INEC offices, and of course, killing of the uh, security officials themselves. So the question is, how does this make a, a call or a point for or an argument for inclusion? If you say marginalization and inequity has been, you know, the reason for this clamor, and some would say for the clamor of cessation. How do these arson attacks and killings and destruction make, make a point for inclusion? And who stands to benefit from these attacks? Why have they not gone? Uh, why, why do they continue to recur, in your well, opinion? First correction mm -hmm. is this. Who is doing the destruction? Exactly. Who is attacking police formations? Who is attacking the INEC? If you notice the targets, election conducting body, security body. Mm -hmm. In the first place, Igbos are not destroyers. Igbos are builders. Since the end of the war, the federal government has not been building police stations mm -hmm. in the Igbo land. Every structure you see there, apart from the old prisons in the world, which was built in the 1950s, is the result of the contribution of... I'll give you an example. I come from a human but no local government of Himo State. Recently, the police divisional quarters was destroyed, I think, two or three weeks ago. What most people don't know is that building was built by the community, also community, and donated to the police last December. So why will the people who built turn around to destroy? For what purpose? The average Iboma knows that those who are doing the destroying are not Igbos. The special squad of security men sent by federal government are also not Igbos. Okay. So it's a case of the policemen will come shoot into the air, stray bullet to land on people. And then the unknown government will move around in brand new Hillocks trucks, 
shoots into the air, with face is covered. Once in a while, people get close and do like this, and then they take a closer look at them. So if you say the Igbos are not destroying, who then is carrying out these attacks? The unknown gunmen. It is not by accident that they call them unknown gunmen. That's why I said, if you go to Alaba today, you know there's an Igbo section. If you see there, from the physiognomy, you say these are Igbos. If you turn towards the right, you see Alaba Rago. That's where the houses, the house traders are. You also see the physiognomy. If I go to Jankara Market here in Lagos, you don't need to be told these are Europeans. So if the unknown gunmen cover their faces, once in a while people go, they speak Igbo to them, sing in Igbo, they would even respond. This is quite a strong... It is a, strong, a revelation. Yeah. But the biggest problem they have now in Igbo land is that if they see somebody of my age, they will go after me. Police will arrest me and call me a financier. If they see my son, they will grab him and say he's an activist. Send him to the police station, military barracks or anywhere. We have to run around to get him out. And you know what it means to Nigeria for someone to run around. I don't mean real race. Mm -hmm. You have to do something. Otherwise, you see him on TV the next day confessing to things he did not do. Because when they torture you, you have no option. And remember, Archbishop Obina, the Archbishop of the Catholic Diocese, last Sunday came out almost weeping. That the morgue, where they keep dead bodies, that place is overflowing. 35 unidentified bodies. The Nigerian Bar Association came out and said, we have set up a unit to liaise with the police commission. That's how they have been able to rescue some people, including the man who came from Bayelsa, who was going to buy a, a casket for his father-in-law's burial. The one was grabbed and displayed on TV as the high-ranking chief. Permit me to just interject, because you're making strong assertions, and we wonder why this hasn't come to light in a more public forum. But let me just ask, the, the, what we do know, though, is that there was this, I'm glad you said you're from Imo State, yes. there was a sit-at-home order, and it would seem that largely it was obeyed. So that would then beg the question, who is in charge? You know, uh, we want to bring up the issue of IPOP because they've made certain assertions. And then we want to ask the question in, in, as well regarding Imo State. Um, it, it's hard to put this. There, there have been assertions by people in, in Imo State that since the current governor came into being, that Imo State hasn't known peace. So suggesting that his coming in as governor has also triggered some of this uh, violent attacks. What, what's your well, take on let that? Let me take it one by one. Issue of sit at home. To observe a day for our departed brothers, those who died during the war has been on since 1970. So it depends on the government of the, to make it a focal point. No, I'm, I'm talking about how it was enforced. There was intimidation behind it. No, 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 it. there was no intimidation. Listen, what you saw was what we call a charade. Some people wear black and red and be moving around. In Monse you think that Igbos are not Igbos. That's the point I was making. The unknown gunmen are not Igbos. As for day of mourning, it's observed every year. You have seen the one of 30. September 9th, some people will also observe their own. They don't make noise about it. They just call their own young people. We call our own mourning our dead. Two, IPOB is what I would call a phenomenon that has risen because of injustice, because of lack of fair playing ground, because of arrant discrimination. Now, nature abhors vacuum. So whenever there is this kind of lack of inclusiveness, grumbling will come in. All it takes is somebody to harvest that they're grumbling and say, this man is doing something bad. Let's see what I can do. Believe me, the average person will join. Mm. On the issue of the governor, yeah, but I leave it at that. Is the governor in charge of uh, any security force there? No. If he says something negative, they will go against him. You know where he lives in Owe? It's called a fortress. On one side is Army Chief's house, Police Chief, DSS Air Force. All of them live in a circle. And the police headquarters and the prisons that were just burned down, you just opposite them. Okay. CCTV showed all those who do the attacking. Do you know that till today, none of these groups I mentioned ever produced that CCTV? 
and I mean, a lot of people watch will be wondering why is nobody being brought to book? Uh, where are the perpetrators? But in the absence of state police, we've seen vigilantes across the country, states having to uh, form their own vigilantes, and uh, as well as uh, regional security. Same as the South is with Abu Bay Agu. Um, they don't seem to be making much headway. What have the governors got wrong when, uh, uh, when it comes to security of their states and, of course, the region, Southeast in particular now? Well, I don't want to call it intimidation from Abuja. I also don't want to call it timidity of the governors. No. Let me say it's a case of three political parties having governors in the Southeast. Three political for uh, PDP has two. That's Enugu and Abia. Enugu has always had a bubago. They have a name for their own, and they have bosses for them. Yeah. Abia State, yes, its own is not as elaborate as that of Enugu. Imo State also passed a law a long time ago, outlawing open grazing. Mm -hmm. And they also passed a law establishing a bubago. But then the governor said he has sent Sogbo to train the military barracks in Anambra State, so that when they come, they form the nucleus. Now, the man in Anambra also has his own. His own method is different. Because there are three parties, they have different methods. Abga said, okay, if you kill a cow, you pay. If you kill a human being, you pay. And they're enforcing it. So when they're talking of a bag to them, they may say we have something different. The man in Ebo, you know, he has just joined APC. Mm -hmm. And he's also the chairman, so he's been drawn on one side. Unfortunately, his state is the worst hit by the killer headsmen up till this Sunday. They are still killing. Now, the governors are also, well, I think they're handicapped. But remember this, there are killings all over the country in all the zones. And in terms of number, in terms of statistics, Kaduna State has had more people killed or kidnapped than the whole of Southeast and South South put together. Mm. Yeah, the idea of police, when he came, he said, I'm concentrating on Southeast and South South. In other words, they know what they're doing. So those special squads sent to Imo State because of this crisis, are they putting anything together? Their job is to go and block the road. I saw them, I was there Saturday before last. For me to pass, all the roads were blocked in the city. For me to go to the airport, I had to call one man. When I noticed his less unfriendly appearance, I said, I just joked. He said he was an Asian man. I said, ah, Asian, why are you? He laughed. He said, Asian, I said, okay, Oba, talk me. He said, he said, he relaxed. He said, oh, I got pass. That's how I was able to go to the airport. The next day, based on the Golak was killed. The insecurity there is there, but it's artificial. You seem okay. to be blaming. Sorry, can yes, I? You seem to be ahead. blaming um, everyone else, uh, particularly the federal government, except for those the in the Ibos, region. Because we are not destroyers. The average Ibo man is a builder. That over airport was built, started by this Ambaku, with people contributing one, one naira. Everything you have in Imo State was built by the people, not by the government. Okay, let me just bring this in, because I think some might find it convenient, like mm. my colleague just said, that Igbos are not destroyers, Igbos are builders. But I still want to focus on the stay-at-home order, and then hopefully you can tag on the way forward, because we're talking about restoring peace in the southeast. I'm looking at a video, a commentary around a video that went viral, Namdi Khan, with the sit-at-home order. He said, anyone that goes out or disobeys that order has themselves to blame. And I know people who live in the southeast were actually intimidated by that. And so even though you justify, well, I wouldn't say you justify, you, you gave an explanation I for why to I pulled. intimidation. I object to it. There was no intimidation. We saw people with cutlasses on a video. Those ones are unknown gunmen. Anyway, I, what I would be your way. proposal of the way forward? My in terms proposal of is this. Let the government of the day call a conference to discuss security. We call it security summit. Call independent-minded people, not psychophants. Not those contractors who have to say the right things in order to get job. No. They will tell him straight. If an Igbo man appears today to contest election, that will not make him president. What will make him president against the votes of other zones? So he should let it go. President Buhari has done his bit. He has only two more years to go. He has spent six years. He can destroy his image by what follows next. All the warmongers around him, probably they didn't see the war. They don't know that war means death. 
And no Igbo man wants war in Igbo land. Never. As we say in Igbo, Ozemena, let it not happen again. Mm. That's how we speak. Well, at least uh, there seems to be a consensus that war is definitely not the way forward. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Mr. Godi Waziriki, for being on Newsday today. Thank you. God bless you.